Okay, so we're just quickly going to go over some of the processes that take place in urban areas. So remember that our urban system or model is constantly changing. So the urban area is very, very dynamic depending on the economic activity in a particular period of time here. So you can see here, there's a range of different processes and different directions of movement. So we can go back to industrialization Right, so we have industrialization, so different countries are at different stages, then we generally get rural to urban migration. This will contribute to urban growth, and maybe is one of the components then, because we've got two components of urbanization here. All right, so you can see the push and pull factors when we're looking at rural to urban migration. Right, so generally this is in our low income country. So if I talk about either urban growth and at various times, urbanization because I need an increase in percentage or proportion of people living in urban areas. I also look at natural increase. So remember some of these people who are moving into urban areas are of the reproductive age group. So if I'm looking at urbanization, don't get confused with urban growth. I need to have an increase in either the percentage or proportion of people living in urban areas. So my high income countries generally between 80 and 85% already a lot of these already have a high percentage here. So I can see up here, looking at South Korea, just over 80%, all right? And I see some of my emerging economies here with changes in the economic activity generally, more and more people migrating and moving into urban areas as a result. Now, if I go to my high income countries, many of them have or are experiencing the process of deindustrialization. Okay, so a long-term decline in employment in manufacturing. So we've seen this in Detroit. Uh, they haven't really diversified historically their economy, so really heavily reliant on cars and with regards to outsourcing here to cheaper locations, we've lost a lot of employment in manufacturing. So a lot of people have moved out. And there are a range of reasons again for deindustrialization, which are here, and that can result in urban decay. So as a result of urban decay, we see a range of centrifugal movements. So they're movements out of. So those that could afford to move may have gone to the suburbs. Uh, if I really have a look at counter urbanization, remember this is extending past this area here, all right, as a result. Okay, so these are my suburbs. You can tell from an aerial photograph what they look like. Okay, if I'm looking at suburbanization, a shift from the central urban areas into the suburbs. This will result in urban sprawl. So again, building on greenfield sites generally. Okay, so counter urbanization. I do have a break here from the rural to urban fringe. There's a green belt or a green area, which you can see here. Some more people are moving out into the countryside where it's traditionally quieter, cheaper, but car ownership, working from home due to technology has enabled this process to take place. So there's a range of push and pull factors here. So as a result, the inner urban area has gone into decay or decline. So we need to get people to move back in. So we've talked about these types of processes, so centripetal processes. Reurbanization is about getting people to move back into an area that has previously been abandoned. So I can look at gentrification, right? This is when, and again, this is when individuals generally, right, wealthier people, we've called them yuppies, young urban professionals. They might move in, modernize housing, making improvements, then business come in. All right, attracting new businesses and displacing those who currently live in the area. So this can be very controversial, such as Brixton. We've also looked at Barcelona and regeneration and the way in which they have upgraded areas. Okay, so just want to remember that our urban areas are dynamic. They are constantly changing. So go through these processes again and look at some of the push and pull factors and where they take place.